Hey, welcome to my survival guide on anatomy. I'm Josh Black, a senior concept artist and figure drawing instructor with over 15 years of experience in the gaming industry. Having taught figure drawing and anatomy at BYU University and online for over a decade now, I've been honing my skills, and now I'm here to share them with you. This course is the culmination of everything I've learned about anatomy, simplified into a survival kit tailored for artists. Whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your skills, this course will help you navigate through the complexities of drawing human anatomy. We'll start off with the basics, breaking the human body down into manageable sections, the head, torso, arms, and legs. And yes, we'll cover both male and female forms in these videos. I put together lessons to help emphasize the importance of the bones and muscles underneath the skin. On top of the anatomy lessons, you'll also get some instruction on gesture drawing, which I consider to be the cornerstone of this course. Gesture is all about capturing the essence of human movement, something that can truly bring your art to life. So join me in my anatomy survival guide, and let's elevate your anatomy together. See you in the course. Hello, Josh. Hey, Steven. How's it going? Good. How are you? It's pretty good so far. Yeah. Uh, so first and foremost, welcome everybody out there. I think this is going to be a good one. Uh, Josh is a fantastic artist who did a very good introduction in the course trailer. I realize I don't have to say anything else about you, really. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I, I think you guys altered my voice so it was lower. So yeah. We, I appreciate that. Yeah, we went, we just like, pulled up the masculine slider real hard. <laughs> And did, did a little bit of, of a blown out lighting, which I appreciated. <laughs> it's nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I did realize in there, I don't anyone in the chat out there, um, feel free, let, let us know where you guys are here from. I'd, I'd like to hear where everyone's like coming in from, what time it is, where you guys are. Uh, but did anyone else realize that talking about like an anatomy course kind of sounds like you're teaching people how to like, I don't know, hide a body? <laughs> You talked about breaking down the human form into manageable pieces. <laughs> oh, that sounds awful. <laughs> I don't know if it doesn't watch you too many true crime shows, That's, but <laughs> it's not what I do. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> uh, so yeah, yeah. Josh, uh, what are we going to do today? Um, well, today I, I thought I would go through um, one of my exercises that I do every morning, one of my morning routines. Um, something that I try to do like with my YouTube channel and my tutorials is I, I want to show everyone kind of what I do personally every day to get better as an artist and how to improve my anatomy. Uh, so today I wanted to show you an exercise I do, um, where I just select like different, uh, sculpture reference, uh, from online and. Uh, I will draw from these references and, and just try to study them and learn from them. Um, I found that it's it's a great resource for learning uh, from the old masters um, and also to learn how they streamlined uh, the human forms and volumes uh, in a more kind of designed and digestible uh, fashion. So I, I think it's a great way to learn um, slightly stylized anatomy, um, but, but also very much based in uh, reality. So we're, we're going to do that. And I'm also going to show you just some warm up exercises that I do. And yeah, hopefully uh, everyone can follow along too and we can all draw together. So yeah, if you guys do end up like uh, drawing along with any of the things that Josh is doing here today, post it and tag us, please. Don't tag Stan, Stan Proco TV, not Stan Proco TV, please. <laughs> that way I can actually repost it. Uh, in, in case any of you guys are interested in the course as Josh is educating you guys on what he does, um, there, there'll be a link here and in the description, but there's a pinned one in the chat for anyone who's here live for you guys to be able to check out that course. Uh, it's a really good one. I like it a lot. I got to go through it to edit the trailer that was at the beginning of this. There's some good stuff in there. Um, so yeah, Josh, do you want me to try to pull some questions from people here in this chat? Or do you want to explain what you do as your part of your warm ups first? Um, I, I can start uh, with some explanations just 
then after that, we can take some questions. Okay, yeah. For you guys in the chat, um, if you guys can just start the your question with a capital Q so I can see it a little bit easier. And if you guys ask your question multiple times, I'm going to put it lower on the list of things to answer. You've been warned. All right, Josh. <laughs> Go ahead. All right. Um, so uh, the, the first thing I like to do when I wake up early in the morning, uh, just, just so you know, I'm going to be honest, I wake up pretty early, like 4.30, uh, five, five o'clock ish. Mm -hmm. And and I do that so I can get my exercises in. I, I am a full-time concept artist. I work full-time. And for me, it's like so important to get my, uh, my studies in that I, I try to wake up early to do that. Um, but first thing in the morning, like my wrist is kind of cold. Uh, my hand-eye coordination might be a bit off. So I have like a series of exercises that I do to, to warm up my wrist. Um, and just to kind of loosen up my line. Um, so I just want to show you what some of those exercises are. Mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I do is I like to do a series of uh, circles, just filling up a page. And, and this is a nice way to kind of warm up your shoulder as well. Um, on, honestly, like you draw a lot with your shoulder uh, when you do figure drawing. Um, or just drawing in general. Mm -hmm. um, like when I'm drawing these circles, I'm not actually using my wrist much. This is mostly just me rotating my, my shoulder. I should ask for, for people, as you're talking about drawing from the shoulder and everything, um, this will be something that some people who are working on a smaller tablet won't be able to do, possibly. What is it that you're working off of? Um, oh, sorry. I'm working oh, on uh, uh, Cintiq, a Wacom Cintiq. Uh, 24 HD, and this is with Photoshop. So, okay, okay, thank you, I appreciate it. And your brushes are brushes that you that you made, that you sell as part of this course, right? Yes, yes, of course. Uh, <laughs> That's this always brush, the next question. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure that, that this brush is probably one of my favorite sketch brushes. It's the Soft Sketch brush, and like one thing I really like about it is. Um, it has nice pen pressure sensitivity, so you can kind of go in lightly if you're doing like a lay-in, but then if you add more pressure, you know, it goes to dark. Also, it's got, um, if we zoom in here, you can see it has a soft edge on one side and a hard edge on the other. So it, it just naturally produces a nice uh, amount of variety in your line uh, and, and gives it consequently more energy and life, I think. so. Yeah, it's it's a brush I definitely recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, so again, just a reminder: this course is on presale. Um, I'm not sure the exact day that it launches, uh, but yeah, there's a little little code here. That's the code right there, and the one in the chat. There you go, John. You happy? It's my second time mentioning it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, so for for you. Um, you choose to start with circles, not ellipses. Uh, yeah, I start with circles. Um, and then, you know, when I get a little more aggressive, I'll start drawing with a, a darker, kind of more confident line. Um, just to kind of show depth, one thing you'll realize is that um, the circles that you drew initially with kind of a softer, uh, lighter line will kind of push back. They'll recede back in the, uh, in the background. And then the lines that are darker uh, and have crisper edges, they'll actually pop forward. So that's that's one thing I like about these exercises is it's almost a reminder, a refresher on like basic principles of design. Mm -hmm. um, and even when you're drawing these circles, like you can uh, remind yourself of the design principle of big, medium, small. Um, or you could draw like a big circle, medium circle, and then a little circle. And it's also a reminder of how important like distancing is, like having variety in the distances between your shapes mm -hmm. uh, as you're drawing. So that's another thing I try to be mindful of. And then, yeah, I try to do uh, ellipses, which are always, you know, fun. They're one of the more technical and difficult things to do. Um, but when I draw those, I'll cut them up like uh, pizzas. Okay, okay to show the perspective. So it's, it's a good way to practice ellipses, but also practice your controlled 
straight lines um you know kind of warm up with that mm -hmm. and uh practice uh you know converging your lines at a singular point so that's that's also pretty helpful yeah um but yeah you want to want to try like different perspectives um I, I do like it being pizza. I'm going to be honest. Oh, who doesn't love yeah. pizza? Pizza's great. <laughs> I had pizza for lunch, actually. Oh, consider me jealous. I had one banana. Oh. Actually, well, this, 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 is, this is an important question. You guys in the chat, what did you guys have for lunch? <laughs> Please answer. The, the best one that I see in here. That's a real answer. I'll, I'll mention here in the chat. Um, but yeah, so as, as you're working on this, is, is there anything that you think that you do, do differently than what is normal for conventionally taught warmups? Um, you know, not, not a ton. Um, I mean, a lot of these exercises I've learned from different artists over time. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and I just, I try to do like several of these, um, every day before I get into like uh doing figure drawing I'll, I'll do gesture drawing after i do these warm-ups typically and do like one minute gestures work my way up to like five minute gestures seven minute gestures and then after that i'll do my anatomy studies and then if i have uh more time i'll do a painting and then if i even more, if i have even more time i'll do a series of out of my head drawings and doodles mm -hmm. um so yeah th those are kind of the things i try to get in every day i actually have a checklist um that i have on a uh a doc a google doc and i got a little checkbox so if i get my anatomy done i check that off if i get my painting done i check that off if i get my imagination sketches done i check that off mm -hmm. um and i try to do that mostly in the morning but then also in the throughout the day when i have little breaks um so it, it kind of helps me feel like i'm uh keeping all those different uh, sensibilities um, sharp and fine tuned mm -hmm. as much as I can. Yeah, this makes sense to me. Um, so Josh, do you want to know what anyone had for lunch? I'm just bringing the serious information right now. Of course. Okay, so uh, there have been a lot of things. There there were some, like, some different uh, corned beef and cabbage, also pizza. Uh, someone said to hear uh, chicken with rice in Spanish. Uh, ramen with kimchi and garlic but my favorite one came from young neil two sad pieces of bread huh. which is in keeping with the character of young neil from scott pilgrim so way to go you're living the role two, two sad pieces of bread <laughs> um is, where where does you so you were describing some of the things that you do for your warm-ups are there more that you do in here that you want to discuss yeah, I, I can kind of speed through these uh, real quick. So I do the ellipses, the circles, and then I'll just do like a series of triangles of, you know, different shapes. Um, try to rotate them around. Again, big, medium, small. Um, and then after that, uh, I'll try to do a series of kind of three-dimensional shapes, adding uh, volume and perspective, doing cylinders. And I know this is like what every artist tells uh, students to do mm -hmm. but, but it it helps so much because it it trains you it, most beginners uh they'll lean very heavily on contour and they'll just kind of follow the contour of whatever their reference is and they, they kind of do this kind of chicken scratch line kind of following the contour they're not thinking in the round mm -hmm. um, so that exercise of drawing these three-dimensional shapes helps you um conceptualize uh this 2d surface you're drawing on as a 3d space mm -hmm. um almost like you're you're modeling as a 3d modeler and um so yeah I, I find that's also a very helpful exercise um where you, you almost try to see these in uh kind of x-ray mode where you're seeing all the the verts you're seeing uh all the edge loops and uh like you're a 3d modeler Mm -hmm. um so you can go I, in and draw those in yeah i think ha having the actual like the full form in your mind 
helps you to kind of like extrude the idea of that shape, how it would impact the other forms around it more than just seeing like the, the visible plane of it. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. and, and it, and it makes it easier. Like you said, if you're uh, doing like complex designs um, that consists of all these different three dimensional shapes kind of interlocking together, like you can start off with very simple shapes and then you start from the primary, then go to secondary, tertiary, and get more and more uh, detailed. But if you know how to do these uh, simple um, fundamental shapes, then you know you can kind of. And and actually, that is something I learned from uh, Stan Lee's uh, "How to Draw Comics the Marvel Way." Mm. Like, it's it the the art style is very very old school, very dated. Yeah. It's classic. Yeah, it's classic. <laughs> it, it's amazing, the information in there. Um, I know if, for me personally, when I looked at it, I uh, initially I was like, eh, I don't really like this style. Mm -hmm. um, but um, over time, I realized just how helpful the concepts are that it teaches. And yeah, so that, that's a really good one. Yeah, I think even like for, for people who are first learning, they're looking through older books, they're looking through... Uh, any sort of educational material from before, the first thought might be that you don't want to work with the concepts that are being said in here because you don't like the visual style that you see. But the core concepts of constructing something, building it, breaking it down, those are all consistent things that you will use across any different style, unless there's hyper-specific parts of a method, like differences between Riley and others. But breaking stuff down is going to be across all styles. It's up to you how you apply style after those things. Uh, okay, so when you, after you've gone through your warm-ups, what uh, did you do you want to start on a drawing? Because I have yeah, so yeah, many let's, questions let's from it. people now. <laughs> there are one million questions. You guys are wonderful for asking all of them. Yeah, let's let's dive in. Um, okay. So I just want to go over the reference real quick and just kind of tell you why I chose some of these. Okay. Um, and what my objective is in, in selecting these images. Um, obviously, that this bust here, I you know I want to focus more on the planes of the face, and kind of see how the light uh, plays with the forms, and you know where I get cast shadows, where I get core shadows, and uh, where I see bounce light. And and one thing I really like about uh, working from sculpture reference is you don't have to worry about color. Color is not uh, part of the equation, so you can focus mostly on the planes and just shading the rendering. Um, and for the most part, most of the shapes are designed and simplified. Mm -hmm. So it's a little easier for, I think, beginners to uh, to, to digest and internalize um, than if you worked with something that was very detailed and, you know, had like the pores and wrinkles and you know, all the extraneous stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but like here, I picked these eyes. Uh, I think these sculpture, um, sculptural eyes are a fantastic reference for learning how to draw uh, eyes. Because you like you can see here, you see all the planes. Um, you can see the thickness of the eyelids. You can see uh, the shape of the, the iris and um, of the pupil. And you can see how light interacts with those planes. Um, you can see how the eyeball kind of rests inside the ocular cavity. Um, and again, you can kind of see where the half tones are, where the highlights are, and uh, cast shadows, and um, and and yeah, even some of the old, uh, you know, Roman and Greek statues are are great. Uh, I mean, even some of the like like Koro statues from ancient Greece. They look very, very rudimentary, but it's actually a good way to kind of learn how to streamline like the mm -hmm. torso and the forms. Um, like here is great. You can see um, very, here I'm gonna, you can see um, where the external obliques rest on top of the pelvis, uh, on top of the, um, you know, the pelvis shape here. Uh, this external oblique, the lower flank rests on top of the uh, the aces, which is kind of this bony protrusion of the most uh, 
anterior portion of your iliac crest. Um, and, and it's just so easy to see with these sculptures. Mm -hmm. And you can see a simplified design of the rectus abdominis, you know, which is this. Um, you can see, you know, these very simplified shapes for the pectoralis major and minor. And here you can see the, the serratus muscles and how they feed into, uh, you know, the, the nipple line here. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you can see um, the thoracic arch of the rib, rib cage, which mm -hmm. is a very important landmark. And, and then you can see where the latissimus dorsi kind of uh, continues that curve on the uh, the the side of the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for in these situations, the people who came before us who went through like the sculpt uh, sculpting pieces, either uh, otherwise like refining the form for like mass visual appeal, they typically already did a lot of the work that we want to do in observation in trying to stylize and otherwise uh, present the human form. Like there's, there's a reason these work out so well. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it it's kind of a good way uh, to, again, keep things a little more simplified. So it's not so intimidating because a lot of times we're like, Oh, what should I draw? Um, and, and I think one thing that paralyzes a lot of us as artists, when we, we want to do an exercise, we want to just jump into drawing it's that dilemma of knowing what to draw. So, so this is something that you can just go to if you don't know what to draw, like look, look up some uh, sculpture reference and just see how the old masters simplified the form. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we can get started. I don't want to talk the whole time. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're, we're still in the part where people are asking, they're kind of like streaming in slowly. Uh, and so we're going to tell them like, yeah, no, it will be available as a, as a VOD afterwards. So we're, we're still in the opening part. Um, oh, okay, great. So is there anything that you want to kind of set up as you start here? Or do you want me to start giving you questions and you can bring up things that you do as you do them? Uh, yeah, we can get the questions and I'll just start drawing as we take those questions. Okay. Uh, here, we'll start with a with an easy one from Charles Houghton or ha yeah, I'm going to say Houghton who asked so many questions. Um, <laughs> who are Josh's art heroes? So who, who do you, who do you uh, look up to besides obviously Stan Prokopenko? <laughs> oh yeah, of course. That was for sure going to be the very first one I mentioned. Uh, I, I have so many, it's, it's hard to, uh, it's hard to remember all of them. I, I mean, you can see I have, I have lots of books behind me of different artists, um, but I have to mention, I, I, I went to BYU University and mm -hmm. I had really great instructors. Um, I, I took figure drawing from uh, Bob Barrett, um, from uh, Peter Sakovich, uh, Chad Barksdale, uh, Ryan Woodward. Um, it, he's a, a fantastic animatic artist and effects artist. He actually worked on um uh some of the the earlier warner brother uh animated films um the iron giant being one of them like he, mm. he did he did the big nuclear explosion in the sky when that goes off above mm. the city um i i learned a lot from him and he was probably the first artist where i was just kind of blown away and it, he really got me excited before I saw his work, I actually was going to be a ceramicist. Ooh, uh, I, I I love pottery as well and doing ceramic sculpture, and I, I was actually majoring in that at BYU. And then I saw his work, and uh, I took some figure drawing classes there. And yeah, so that that was a huge influence on me for sure. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Getting to like see a person doing a thing beautifully, you know, it makes all the difference in the world. Uh, oh yeah. There, actually, as you as you're doing this, so there's a line that you're drawing here, kind of like across the brow, showing like that whole space around here. This is something that I noticed in a lot of the the drawings that we posted of yours on a, the, a YouTube community post recently. Can you talk about why it is that you choose to have this this indication in here? Uh yeah, of course. Um, 
it's it's just kind of a, a way to show the tilt um, of the head, kind of show the the perspective, um, and it's to show the the brow line. Mm-hmm. Um, but as I do this little ellipse, it also kind of creates a little sense of depth and volume, and it also gives it a little bit of energy. So it's it's a guide, but it also adds a little bit of energy. It shows the tilt, so I I, I like it. Yeah, it's, it's a helpful guide for me. Okay. And, and I'll, I'll uh, underneath that, I'll find the eye line. And then I'll go in and, you know, find that center line that will show us where how the nose, the lips, and the eyes um, all line up with each other. So. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, I can give you a couple more questions here. Please feel free to keep just drawing away. Uh, and if at some point in time there's something that you really like that you want to discuss... Um, feel free to, but I'm going to just pepper you with some questions here in the beginning. Okay. So Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but you, you did take some Proco courses at some point, I believe. Uh, was that? Yeah, was that for, for sure. I, uh, I watched a lot of his YouTube videos. I see. Um, I, I, I love his work, his sense of humor. It was very entertaining and it was, it was fun to watch. And I also learned a lot from watching those videos. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, Cause there was a question in here from uh, Wolf Knightley uh, and they were asking if you already have Proko's anatomy course, is there also a good reason to get your course too? Uh, and what would that be? So do you think that there's anything that is a little bit different in yours? Um, yeah. I mean, of course there's going to be lots of, areas of overlap Mm -hmm. you know i think that's true for most figurative artists because we're all dealing with the same uh, subject matter um i i would say maybe one thing that uh kind of sets my stuff apart is maybe more of a focus on uh like gesture um fair and uh just kind of like quicker um uh, gestural lines um and that's definitely more my focus. Uh, I, I'm a, a concept artist and, you know, a lot of times I, I have to learn to draw quickly to get tasks done. And so gesture is like a very, uh, very important um, tool to have when you're a concept artist and you, you have a ton of tasks that you're supposed to get done and you're iterating very quickly. Mm-hmm. So, so yeah, I, I would say focusing maybe a bit more on the gesture and I think my approach is a little uh, unique on uh, on gesture. Yeah, so. I agree. I think yeah, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of focus on movement in the things that that the parts of the videos that I was watching. Uh, and then I do think that for your course, it's more about um, breaking things down into groups rather than talking exclusively about muscle group names, where they connect to the bones, in and in, like in with that being the lion's share of information. Yours is more about this, why this part is important for you to look at and how to simplify or stylize some of those areas. Yeah, for sure. It's, it's just kind of getting um, the main superficial uh, anatomy and structures. So you can then take that and, and hopefully uh, kind of design your own characters and uh, it'll be a little easier for you to conceptualize uh, that anatomy out of your head. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's actually, there's a, a nice recent question here. That's a good one. I'm going to put this ahead of some others. Um, but Alex Ry- Rilo? Rilo? <laughs> uh on Josh's course, will he do a weekly critique of students' assignments? I think that your, your course is like, uh, it's that, the video series. That's it. There's not much... There's not like assignments coming out and then critiques afterwards, right? Yeah, not not yet. But I mean, I would love to give feedback to anyone who who reaches out to me. Mm-hmm. Um, for the most part, if people reach out to me, I I do my best to do drawovers and and give my thoughts on their okay. work. So, um, yeah, feel f- free to like post your work. I don't know if that's a thing where you post on. Uh, an instructor's um, page. Yeah. They, um, so people who are following along with the course or if they're following along with a free video where they don't necessarily own the course, um, 
but there's some free lesson posted somewhere. They can post the work that they did that was following along with that course uh, and ask for a critique or ask for help on something. And they can tag you in this um, or send you a DM even on Proco. Yeah. Um, yeah but I think you're also, you're also pretty responsive on socials, I think, in general. But you guys might have better luck in talking about course stuff on the place yeah. where the course is. So uh, let's see some, some more here. Josh, do you, um, this is another one from Charles Houghton. Um, does Josh freelance or work full time at a studio? Uh, I work full time mm -hmm. um, at a studio for uh, Stoke Games. And I, I love it. You it's, said uh, you guys are um, a little bit newer, I believe. Yes. Yeah. We're, we're a newer studio. And so we're, we're a smaller team. Uh, but it's, I, I actually love being in a smaller team. I, I was uh, working for Avalanche before mm -hmm. um, on big projects like uh, Hogwarts Legacy. And um, we worked on Disney Infinity, designing the toys and doing uh, all that fun stuff with the, the Marvel, Star Wars, and uh, Disney um, franchises. And uh, but working with a small team is is pretty fun because you get to wear multiple hats. There's a lot to do. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. It, it keeps you it busy, and it doesn't get boring. It's not like you're like just doing like you're just like a you're not just texturing models or anything, you know. Like you get to actually do different tasks. Maybe learn something new from somebody, or be forced to learn something new because nobody on the team knows it. Yeah, and it's exciting too because you kind of get to see um, like how companies are kind of structured and how the hi hierarchy kind of begins and watching the growth and just I guess seeing how the sausage is made from the ground level is is pretty exciting and and of course you know I get to work with I work with a great team like that they're, they're all they all have awesome personalities and we're we're good friends we get along so it's so far it's been it's been great. Yeah, except for that one guy on your team. You were talking about Doug. You said Doug was a real jerk. Uh, wait, he, that's, he that's my that's my brother. Oh, okay. No, we weren't gonna, we <laughs> weren't a, gonna bring that up. This was a, this was a fake conversation. I swear <laughs> he didn't say anything about a Doug. Uh, let's it's see here. Call this brother in whose shadow I live. Is Doug is Doug a butthole? No, no, actually, Doug's okay. Doug's awesome. <laughs> Um, there's, a, there's a question here that's a pretty classic one uh, from a person whose name is Born Again. Uh, what is the best order to learn art? Uh, and their examples are faces, gestures, anatomy, etc. I think this one kind of, there's some general guidelines that you can have, but Josh, was there an order that you found most beneficial for you? Uh, you know, for, for me, I think it is nice to... Um... So again, going back to those exercises, that's probably a good place to start. It's not the most uh, like flattering or exciting uh, thing to draw, but drawing those cylinders, cones, uh, boxes, um, getting started with those. But of course, part of the, the trick is to keep you excited, to keep you uh, passionate about mm -hmm. what you're doing. That's, that's also a huge part of <laughs> learning. So I, I think one thing that's really important is that you just you find out what you love yourself like what you're really interested in and you draw that um uh, you know try to do that in addition to studying anatomy and the human figure because mm -hmm. I, I think studying regardless of what you'd prefer if you study the human figure and uh gesture like that's a strong foundation that's going to help you across the board with what, whatever else you like drawing. Um, so I'd, I'd say that. Um, but as far as the, the figure itself, um, I, I think it's, it's nice to start with the head. Um, it is, it's technical, but I think it's a, not quite as overwhelming as starting out with the whole figure. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like, also gratifying. There's a reason that people end up gravitating to drawing faces. Yeah. I, I think it's like you see kind of the, the soul and the um, that living person and you want to like connect with it and uh, capture 
you know, that, that person's essence. And it's, it's pretty exciting when you do. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it's, it's definitely like the first place we look when we look at a person. Yeah. I think like the, the thing that they mentioned for where people look first, uh, it's always eyes and hands. They're two of the things that you want to try to nail in a piece uh, or include when you're designing YouTube thumbnails. Yeah, thank goodness you guys can't see my hands right now because they're <laughs> shaking. <laughs> just so much caffeine. <laughs> yeah, I took a few shots before this just to... <laughs> just all the caffeine in the body. Just for a little boost. Yeah. Um, let's see here. There, there are so many questions. You guys are fantastic about these questions right now. I really appreciate it. Every once in a while, we have a group of people here in the chat that just kind of sit and watch and just say that looks good every once in a while. It's appreciated, but it's just not as fun. Uh, so Simp Potato is asking, how do you simplify muscles and features? Um, is there any kind of way that you choose to simplify something most? Do you stick to mostly doing um, like C, S, and I curve, or like C, S, and I lines? Or do you have something else that you prefer to think of it as? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I definitely uh, gravitate towards those uh, overall lines of action initially uh, of the figure or of whatever area of the body I'm focusing on. Like uh, everything has its own line of action, its overall flow. And for, for example, I can... If I were to draw like a quick arm, mm-hmm. like I, I could just do a quick gesture like that. Like there's really nothing uh, descriptive with the the muscles, the anatomy, but like that could be a decent place to start where, you know, I have the hand, I, I have like a finger and I can kind of go back in and start adding a little more detail, but just having that like initial line of action, which would mm-hmm. be, you know, that. Uh, it kind of it's like that connective uh, energy that allows your eye to travel from top to bottom of that form. Um, mm-hmm. So I, I generally focus on that initially, uh, and then I'll go in and you know start breaking it down, and and I'll add the biceps, and I'll go in and uh, get the the tricep muscle in there, and find the olecranon, the the elbow, the ulna. And uh, go in there and get the ridge muscle, and then here we have the the brachialis. Um, and you know, then I'll start doing these overlapping lines to show um, some some depth. Yeah, I think the one thing that people really kind of they ignore in the beginning when they're first learning. Um, is the idea of working big to small, which is like a, a big part of what you were just doing, where you started with the overall shape and then you start going into details. Like you have your landmarks that you want to define, and then move into smaller and smaller details. Because it's much easier to correct from a big shape first. Oh, yeah, for, for sure. And honestly, it's it's kind of weird, but like that whole like approach is almost like you can apply it to life in general. Like if, if you focus on kind of the macro, uh, you start with the big picture, the large shapes, you know, and then you work your way into the details. A lot of times that uh, that will be uh, to your advantage, I think. Mm-hmm. So, um, I have two questions. So the first one uh, is one that's going to be a, a common question here uh, that I think we should probably get into before going talking about the course too much more. Um, let me bring up the exact question here. So this is from, oh, I lost it. (laughs) Uh, so Josh, is this a compilation of your Gumroad courses or is your Proco course a completely different thing? That's from Artistic Spartan. Oh, um, so it's, it's a compilation of everything, uh, from the Gumroad courses. Um, so yeah, it has all the brushes it so i have like an anatomy pack on gumroad but Mm -hmm. that doesn't come with as much as you get in this package where it it also comes with the in-depth tutorial on arms Mm -hmm. and the in-depth tutorial on uh the anatomy of the legs um 
And then also I include a tutorial that goes over shading, uh, lighting, you know, going over cast shadows, core shadows, bounce light, half tones, mid tones, all those uh, kind of the anatomy of lighting uh, that that's also included. So it, it is different. There, there's more in there and, and it's actually uh, a better deal. Um, if you're wanting all of it, of course, if you just want individual little pieces, then you know, probably Gumroad's the way to go. But if you want a really good deal and you want all everything that I just mentioned, the the Proco uh, has everything in there. Nailed it. Perfect pitch. Yeah. <laughs> so just 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 as a reminder for everyone, that's on it's on presale right now. So I believe that's fifteen percent off during that presale. Um, so there's the link in the description, link in the chat. It's a pinned one, and then the thing that's on screen here. It's proco.com slash Josh Black. You get those nice brushes that he's using. Uh, so then the, the question that I, I wanted to bring up here was actually one from a Proco team member. You started going into it a little bit here, um, but Patrick was asking, uh, I'd love to hear more about his shape design and philosophy or hierarchy of simplification. Hmm. Hierarchy of simplification. Yeah, and I don't know if you, if you want to start a new one to um, to show any of these concepts, that's totally okay. Or if you want to work on this one and talk about that. Uh, yeah, we we could start a new one. Um, it'll probably be a little bit easier to start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. um, so let me move this out of the way. Uh, and if you guys are if you guys are drawing in the chat along with this, please again tag us. I want to see it. Oftentimes people mention it, they, they they'll say that they're drawing along, and I never get to see it afterwards. I'm always so curious. Mm. And no, uh, Stormy Hot Wolf eighty eight, great name. Stormy uh, Hot Wolf eighty eight. <laughs> there's there's so many words in there. Um, no, you did not miss the whole thing. We're pretty early in this. Let's see. Yeah, maybe we could start with. Uh, this might be. Uh, actually, let's do with this Bernini. Um, Bernini's David here. Okay. Okay. Let's just show you how. Um, it it, again my my approach the way I, I get started, it really is like um, like a synthesis. It's an amalgam of all the previous artists that I learned from. Mm -hmm. and, and, and honestly, that's the truth for most artists out there. It's that there's, um, and, and I'm not like trying to downplay myself or anyone else, but uh, that like anyone who says they are the, the source of uh, revelation or like new information, that's, that's very, very rare, very uncommon. Most people, they're they're learning from other masters, other artists that they like, mm -hmm. and then they synthesize all those styles together, and then uh, the that like mix and uh, all the different percentages of each of those different artists that they put together becomes their style, and like the the new way in which they put those all together becomes a new style mm -hmm. for the most part. So, just throwing that out there. Um, one thing that really hindered me as a beginning artist was that very thought that I had to be, um, for, for one thing, I was kind of with studio artists <laughs> and, uh, they're all about like, don't, don't learn the fundamentals. Don't learn traditional art. Like, mm. like just kind of let, let yourself go and w whatever you throw down on the paper, like whatever comes out naturally, like that's more art. Mm, I see. Uh, um, but, uh, honestly for, uh, especially what we do as concept artists or, or figurative artists, like we, we must learn from what's been done in the past and that's the fastest way forward. Um, yeah. so, so don't, don't be shy to copy other artists and learn how they do things and learn from them. Like, yeah. so. Absolutely. No, I, I, I think any, anyone who's trying to like reinvent the wheel. I think that it would be a foolish endeavor. Someone already made the wheel before you, you know? Yeah, exactly. 
but but I can't tell you how much that like played mind games with me. <laughs> yeah, I can I only like, imagine. And and I know a lot of other artists that I I learned with kind of had the same problem. It's like kind of have that creative paralysis because you're fearful, like oh I don't want to copy anyone, and and it kind of slows down your learning. So mm -hmm. but when especially when you're starting out as a student, don't worry about that at all. Yeah, I, I, I wouldn't even worry about style. Don't just focus on learning and getting as much information you can from uh, all the artists out there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I agree. I did want to say a special shout out here for Kyle Webster. Uh, Kyle Webster's here in the chat right now. He uh, He's the last person that we did a stream with. It's a fantastic stream where we talked about his um, his super lasso tool for Photoshop. It's a fantastic one. If you guys are curious about any of the stuff that Kyle Kyle Webster has, because he's a busy freaking man, you guys should go check out his website. It's accidental-expert.com. It's really good. He's got a great newsletter as well. You guys should check it out. Um, so you start, this is the way that you'll start constructing heads. Um, I, I like, I'm assuming in general, do you ever find yeah. you starting with any, anything else besides this traditional construction? Uh, I mean, sometimes. Uh, honestly, sometimes I'll just, um, and, and I know this is usually wrong, but I'll start with a single feature depending on how I feel. But for the most part, I'll start off with this kind of general construction. I'll start off with the, with the sphere. So it's, it's a little bit more close to the, uh, Luma's approach. And, you know, then I'll kind of cut away the sides to show the temporal line, um, of the forehead and, you know, I'll go in and do again that that kind of wrapping uh, line to show. Actually, it's going to go the other way because he's he's got a little different. Yeah, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> got that intense Bernini face. Yeah, um, we'll get the the brow line, and then underneath we'll have the eye line. And usually, when I'm doing gesture, I'll just kind of do a little indication of the base of the nose, and then a quick gestural line for the mouth. Um, sometimes I'll just go in and kind of get the those soft edges of the cheekbones. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I definitely like to, early on, find the gesture of the sternocleidomastoids, the neck muscles, kind of show how that head's going to connect <laughs> to the uh to the body to the shoulders it's, a, it's an important one i think it informs a lot of everything else oh yeah yeah for sure um th i think that's one of the harder things uh to get right is making sure you have that proper connection of the mm -hmm. head um because it doesn't matter how beautiful your the, your rendering is of the face if it looks like it's floating on top of the body uh people are going to notice <laughs> yeah and it's not going to look right so a, a good way to um yeah to uh to ground it into the body is those uh sterile cleidomastoids which you know you can see pretty clear oh <laughs> i changed the color there <laughs> just a, a nice pop here. out black <laughs> yeah it uh i just can't help it it's my favorite color yeah you liked it so much you were like you know what this is my last name yeah not that i'm a narcissist or <laughs> anything. Um, but yeah, these are the sternocleidomastoids. And they, they start uh, behind the jaw um, at the base of the cranium, behind the ear, and then the mastoid process. And then they come down and they feed into the pit of the neck. Uh, that's formed by the, uh, the clavicles and the manubrium of the... Um, of kind of that uh it's a it's like the top of a, a tie mm -hmm. uh, it's the manubrium shape that uh is on top of the the sternum there we go this, you, oh i didn't i thought you i thought you were still looking for um for muscle names which is the, my weakest area that the muscle names yeah I thought, I thought you were going with just muscle names not bones i feel so bad i'm sorry i left you hanging oh no it's uh it's fine I, I think it's good to, you know, hear me struggle. And <laughs> so, so we all know we, we do that from time to time. Absolutely. 
the, just, the, there was a um, there's a muscle for a long time that I couldn't remember uh, the name of. Um, and so it was just the, the whole area for the um, I, I'm going to mess this up. The serratus serratus uh, just this this whole area in here. And for the longest time, I couldn't remember the name. And I just kept leaning into calling them the riblets. <laughs> the, the riblets. Yeah. That, I don't know if... that sounds more appetizing. Than <laughs> <Saratus>. <laughs> uh, is there anything uh, like any sort of thing that you have a hard time remembering? Like for uh, in particular? You know, I'll be honest, when I'm like doing a live stream, pretty much everything is hard to remember. <laughs> I think it's um, fair. But let's see, uh, apart from that, uh, you know, actually, I would say the muscles that latch onto um, the, sca the scapula. Okay. The scapulae. Uh huh. I, I don't know how you say the plural for that, the scapulas. We're going to um, call it. That's good. <laughs> but yeah, the, the infraspinatus. Uh, the terrace major, terrace minor. Um, for the longest time, for some reason, I would get the infraspinatus mixed up with the serratus. I don't know why. I don't know why my mind thought those sounded similar, but they don't. They they really don't. That's what the brain does. Yeah. <laughs> it endeavors to trick us. Yeah. These these are the the serratus here. You can yeah, see them on that's this. Them. That's those are the riblets. The riblets. <laughs> yeah. There they are. <laughs> and then they kind of interlock right there uh, with the um, external oblique. Well, now you're just flexing, Josh. Oh, this guy's <laughs> flexing. <laughs> Look at those strained muscles. So, so jacked. Yeah. I can only only dream. Yeah. And well, you, you gave up your life of being a sculptor. So no muscle sculpting for you. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, when when you get married and have kids, uh, yeah, that that dream disappears very quickly. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. It's a busy one. Yeah, you are also you are a profoundly busy man. I think it, there was actually um, a person brought up a question about that. Um, oh goodness. Oh man, I'll try, I'll try to find this here in a moment. But someone did ask about kind of the routine, how you fit things together. Um, but Cat did ask. Um, does the course go over parts of the arms and legs and the hands and feet? Do you have a sections that focus on those? Uh, yes, th there's um, a tutorial or a part of the tutorial that focuses primarily on the arm muscles. So everything in the forearm and everything in the upper arm and also the shoulder uh, muscles. So part of the shoulder girdle as well. Um, it, it, we, we definitely kind of simplify the hand and don't go in depth uh on the hand quite as much mm -hmm. um but yeah it's just kind of simplifying knowing how to do a simple gesture of the hand uh but the the leg um it goes in depth on the anterior posterior muscles of the legs of the upper leg and lower leg uh it goes over the bones and uh also the basic construction of the feet um Okay, I think th this should answer what they're looking for. I should, I, I assumed, but I didn't want to just say yes and then have it be that you just talk about torsos and you say the hands <laughs> and arms are for later. Uh, so let's see. I, I did find the question about the like your habits, your your schedule. Uh, so kill the heretic was asking, have you ever struggled with developing your routine or staying consistent? And do you have any recommendations for resolving that? As a very busy guy, you might have some unique insights on this one. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, I think everyone struggles balancing. Uh, I think most artists probably, uh, especially, yeah, just artists in general. Um, when, when you have a full-time job, you have like uh, contract work and you're, you're also trying to squeeze in your own personal uh, artwork and things that you just enjoy drawing yourself and your exercises. Uh, again, I, as I mentioned at the beginning of the stream, uh, I, I wake up really early. Um, I, I wake up like at 4 or 4.30 to kind of get my day started. Mm -hmm. and, and that's usually when I'll do like my exercises. 
I'll, I'll do those uh, warm up exercises I, I showed earlier. Then I'll, I'll, I'll try to do a page of gestures and then I'll do a page of like more um, long sustained figure drawings. And I try to do imagination sketches, a painting and some like master copies. And when mm -hmm. I say master copies, that, that includes like not just copying the older classical artists, but also uh, contemporary like skilled uh, like animators and concept artists and um, just anyone whose work I admire and enjoy and uh, you know that I'd want to influence my own work. So I, I, I really try to squeeze that in as much as I can early in the day. Uh, it's, it's hard sometimes. My, my kids will sometimes wake up a little too early mm -hmm. and they'll, a lot of times they, they'll scare the crap out of me. They'll sneak up behind me and I don't know they're there. And then, you know, they'll, they'll ask for a bottle or something. And yeah. Um, so that, that, you know, I can disrupt the, the flow, but mm -hmm. I, I try to keep a checklist. So if I don't hit it in the morning, I can look at that checklist, remind myself, okay, these are things that I, I still want to hit for me. It's like, it's like going to the gym. Like I, I know if I do my best to at least hit those things, even if it isn't for the full amount of time, mm -hmm. like creating that routine is crucial to me. And over time, I think it'll pay bigger dividends. If, if uh, you, you are at least trying to remind yourself to do those exercises every day and, and don't worry so much. Don't be so hard on yourself. If you don't, finish all of the exercises um in their fullness like uh you can give yourself credit if you did like three or four uh out of your six uh exercises that you uh task yourself to do so mm -hmm. that's that's kind of how i manage it and and i try to tell myself like okay you didn't get everything you got half of it that's pretty good tomorrow i'll do a little bit better yeah and uh yeah i find if i kind of give myself those reminders and I push myself consistently over time, it, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. so. I agree. Yeah. I think a, like aiming to achieve your goal and trying, even if you know that you might not necessarily hit that, I think is really good. If you consistently don't hit it, maybe adjust the goalpost a little bit and say, you know, I just know that I'm going to be able to do three instead of aiming for 10 every time, just so you don't feel bad, but do what you can. Yeah, for sure. Don't, don't beat yourself up too much. Mm -hmm. um, gotta, gotta have those little wins here and there and yeah absolutely and i think actually that that's an important one uh if you can with whatever your day is try to put your easy win in the beginning of the day of work don't don't start with that thing that you never do every single time i mean it's super cool to try something that you don't do or that you know you might have a hard time with but give yourself an easy win get some confidence up in the beginning Remember the things that you do well. Yeah, for sure. And, and yeah, I'd say if you're like beginning, um, just be happy if you get, uh, you know, like a half hour of drawing in a day. Like start, uh, start small and then try to just incrementally grow that amount of time, um, you know, as much as you can. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, again, over time, that's going to make a big difference. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, yeah, so let's see here. I don't know if you want to break down what you're doing as you're working on this one a little bit. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm trying to multitask think... here a little bit. So I got this is maybe not necessarily how I would do the, the flow here, but I got you. Yeah. Um, yeah, usually I'd, I'd kind of do the underlying, um, structure first the construction drawing maybe just kind of lightly show uh where the hairline would be you know i got the brow line the eye line uh find where the nostrils are make sure they're kind of more or less lining up with the eyes there mm -hmm. um then i can just kind of lightly find those Pupils. Let's see some more over there. Um, and then once I, I kind of get the cranium and the jawline, some of the features blocked in, I can do a quick, I'm going to erase 
or move this over. Oops. It's moving the background. <laughs> in the background. My favorite thing to do. Do it all the time. <laughs> I'm just going to shrink this down a bit. Um, I'll kind of go in and just do almost a more graphic approach to the hair. Uh, at least for me, I find if I use more straights when I'm blocking in the hair shape, it uh, it helps me to block it in faster and more accurately. What one thing that's great about doing these uh, sculptures too is, uh, the, I I would say these sculptors were definitely like some of the architects of. Um, or the first artist to like really streamline hair and clumps mm -hmm. um, and, you know, bigger shapes and clumps. And you see that all the time now in uh, like more animated stylized characters, everything's more in like clumps and large mm -hmm. shapes that are uh, almost like uh, kind of sheets of uh, th thin sheets kind of overlapping each other. You know, you don't ever really see, um, individual hairs or you know a ton of detail maybe there's little accents of detail on those clumps mm -hmm. but it, it's it's more like maybe it's a, a f like a fifth of that whole area has a little hit or accent of detail um but then the rest of it's just more of you know a larger a larger shape so mm -hmm. yeah I, th I think it's a like knowing where you can simplify and stylize in those bigger shapes, I think is really cool. I, I think everyone has that kind of moment where they first realized what an artist did and how it made like a, a big impact on them for stylizing something or blocking something out in a way like that. Yeah, it saves so much time and it makes it a lot easier to uh, kind of conceptualize how those clumps fasten onto the skull. Mm -hmm. Uh, onto the volume of the, the cranium. Um, so yeah, if you're doing individual hairs, it's uh, it's going to be overwhelming. Mm -hmm. So so learning from the old masters and sculptors, uh, how they streamline the hair and design it, it's a fantastic resource for that. So. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see, I have some more questions here. Okay, let's see. So Young Neil, a, a classic chat member now, uh, asked, uh, your ceramicist background is so interesting. Do you think your expertise with 3D media has influenced the way that you understand form and translate it into 2D? Uh, yeah, I, I would like to, to think so. Um, I, I definitely worked more with uh, pottery. Um, I, I threw a lot on the wheel. Uh, maybe I saw a ghost. Once in the <laughs> night, but, uh, it, was, it was always good for a date night. Uh, but yeah, I, I think working with my hands and working with a three-dimensional form in front of me. And uh, when I did do sculpture, you usually started with like a large block and then you'd, you'd kind of have to start with the very simplified forms and volumes. And so it'd be kind of additive at the start. And then you'd kind of do a subtractive method where you're cutting into those volumes when you're using clay. And actually, when, when you start on, uh, drawing through the form and you see these uh, volumetric three-dimensional forms, that's kind of what you're doing too. You're, you're, you're throwing down those like big blocks and masses of clay and then you're cutting away, um, you know, like adding the recess for the for the eyes. Uh, then you're kind of like shaving off the sides of that sphere to kind of show the 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 temporal plates and the te the temporal lines of the sides uh, of the head. Um, so it's 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 very much uh, additive and subtractive um, method, similar to like what sculptors do for sure. Yeah. Um, I guess kind of a little bit in the same kind of vein. 
Um, so your person, you have to work in a few different styles as part of your job. You don't necessarily just get to draw in the one style that you like or that you feel is natural to you. You have to kind of work in different, different styles and with different purposes to different stages of the designing process, right? Oh yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's... I, I can, I can only imagine you're a freaking saint and a hero for being able to do it. That's profoundly hard. Uh, lucky girl in the chat here was asking, I draw in manga style. I would like to know if studying realistic art will be useful for developing creativity. Uh, yeah, definitely. I, um, like I said earlier, I, I think like learning how to draw the, uh, the figure realistically, it, it really kind of helps you learn, uh, principles of design, um, principles of, of how to draw um in the round and and drawing through the form and you know creating something that feels three-dimensional um one thing that's really nice about learning uh anatomy and gesture and this this really helps with like uh anime and and just character design in general or animation uh you learn where the muscles overlap each other mm -hmm. and and that's actually like a a big thing like even uh some of the old like nine uh, Disney animators that, you know, they did kind of like flower sack style animations, like the seven dwarves and all that. I think their knowledge of anatomy is really good because they knew like where the lines would overlap each other and mm -hmm. uh, how those volumes were interacting with each other. Um, and when you understand anatomy really well, uh, like, with the forearm, you would like if the arm's coming out at you, you know that the ridge muscle is going to overlap the bicep, um, and you can show that, like abstractly or stylistically, just by having a line. You don't have to render it. You don't have to make it super detailed. But because you know where it overlaps, it gives that sense of depth, mm -hmm. and, and it makes it more convincing and relatable. Even though it's very stylized, it kind of grounds it in reality. So I think. Um, having that kind of foundation foundational knowledge of the figure and of rendering like can help with that definitely yeah i think like we we talked a little bit about earlier um the structural part of something if you learn those things then you get to apply style after the fact so yeah and and i would say too like you you, you want to do both together mm -hmm. um because if you just do one you'll be good at that. Um, if, if you do one 90% and the other 10%, you're going to be really good at the 90% and not so good at the 10%. So so maybe do like a 40-60 thing where if you really love MAGA, do that 60 and then 40% the figure. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it's always just putting in the hours, uh, the pencil mileage. <laughs> Absolutely. Pen pencil mileage is a very good one for this. I like that. Um, how long would you say, I guess, I don't know. I think that this, this drawing that you're working on right now, is there anything that you want to uh, mention that you're working on with this one before we kind of like go into more questions or anything or a different drawing at all? Um, I, I guess with this one, I, I didn't get terribly far. I was just more showing kind of my approach of breaking it down. Mm -hmm. to simplify shapes. Uh, so I guess just doing like a, a quick overview, you know, just start it off with. Um, so when I, when I do start off, I start off with a softer uh, line, mm -hmm. um, meaning that the edges are soft. Um, and I, I also try to have the line be lighter. So it's, it's a nice foundation. It's a lay in. I can then draw on top of that, like you've seen here. And the darker lines really come forward. And then the lighter lines get pushed back. Um, but yeah, I just, again, start off with the simple shapes, a sphere blocking um, the, the jaw, and then get the eye line, uh, you know, do that T to show the alignment of the eyes and the, um, the features of the face, connecting it to the shoulders with those sternocleidomastoids, and, and then doing uh, abstract kind of 2D shapes to block in the hair. Then once you do that, then you can kind of go in and add the detail and, and try to get more of the, the volume of the hair. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah. I think that this is a is a good way to approach this one. Kind of nail it in the beginning. So you get to work on the fun stuff later. Yes. Um, there is there's a a more recent question in here. I promise everyone who answered the questions earlier, I'll look through those. Um, but uh, Alex was asking, uh, in Josh's course, will he also be tackling proportion and likeness, especially uh, of the ne the head anatomy or anything like that? Do you go over uh, measurements and things? Um, so so again, my approach is more gestural. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're not going to be pulling out the calipers. Um, we're, <laughs> we're not going to, you know, pull out our pencil and, you know, doing this. It's It's more... Um, again, it's kind of a pencil mileage thing where you fail a lot with your gestures, finding, trying to warm up to those more confident broad strokes and finding the overall rhythms. Mm -hmm. And then over time, as you get, you know, better and better, I think your ability is going to get better at getting those, but we do go over proportions. Um, you know, how many heads tall or all the different parts of the body where, where, uh, the different landmarks are that kind of help guide you to know that you're getting the proportions more or less where they need to be. Mm -hmm. But but it's not like a like a gallery artist or, or someone who's a portrait artist who's focusing on getting everything very, very, very precise. Yeah. Um, it's not it's, a measuring course. No, it's it, it's probably more gestural and, and just finding the structure. Again, you can apply it to uh, uh, to animation, to illustration, concept art. Um, but you could also apply it to um, like good foundations to gallery art or uh, figurative art. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly, some, some of my favorite um, portrait artists and gallery artists uh, have amazing gesture. And uh, there's almost kind of a lyrical uh, quality to their line. And uh, they, they really capture the motion and gesture. Uh, singer sergeant i mean he's he's that all the way yeah uh, pro probably like the gold standard um i would say and one person in the chat comes through like no he's trash terrible artist hate him no well, so this, I'll, I'll i'll hold my tongue then if, <laughs> <laughs> i'm just kidding <laughs> um so yeah, I, I do want like now that we're here, pretty much like at this uh, this just after an hour mark. I want to remind people that the person that you're seeing here draw all this art beautifully, quickly, and magnificently. Just released a course on Proco. Uh, you can save fifty percent during the presale that runs until just this Friday coming up here, uh, and that is at Proco.com/slash/JoshBlack. If you guys are interested in it, there's a link in the description here. There's a link here on the screen, and there's a link in the chat pinned. So. There's so many places for you guys to get it. It's really good. You should do it. Um, Josh, do you want to start it like get into a new drawing? Maybe like a more full figure? Uh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. We can move this one over. Mm -hmm. Ooh, actually, I'm curious. As, as a person who has to use Photoshop very often, do you currently have it set to where Photoshop automatically like uh, maintains the proportions? It constrains the proportions? Or do you have it where you have to hold shift to constrain proportions? Uh, shift. Okay. This is from back in the day. You didn't retrain yourself? No. <laughs> no, I, I just do uh, shift T to constrain okay. the proportions. Okay. Um, yeah, old habits die hard. So. It's rough, man. When, when it changed, and they, I understand why. Have it automatically do the proportions, you know? But I can't undo it. I gotta do it or I hold shift because that's how I've done it. Yeah, it's that uh, I don't know how to break the habit, so <laughs> I can't really give any advice there. Yeah, it's, but, it's a hard I'm one. Guilty. Um let's see. Okay. More of a full figure. I mean, I guess we could attempt You went to the riblets guy? The riblets, man. Okay. Oh, this is going to be a little more technical since he's intertwined in a in a large serpent. With a, I forget the story behind the sculpture. Do Do you know Stephen or? Is, we, oh, it, 
I don't know the story for this one. I'm sure there's someone here in the chat, some <laughs> sculpture aficionado who's going to have the whole thing. I'm yeah, so mad. I, I'll be honest. I did take art history, and we did learn this. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a very good long-term memory, so I... Yeah, there's, yeah. there are two statues that uh, I intend to make a whole video about for Proko. Um, just just a short, uh, a real whatever platform you watch it on. Um, but yeah, there's two statues that that have a very interesting history of how they got made that I'll make a video on, and it is not this one. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think the story is um, this hero's was running to like warn uh, of an incoming um, army, I believe. Mm -hmm. But then he was. Uh, he was cut off at the pass uh, by these serpents that cons uh, took him out and these. Okay. You know what? I don't remember. I'm just going to no. shut up. <laughs> no, 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 I liked it. Failed I liked the Failed attempt. <laughs> this, this, is perfect. Buff. this is perfect for the, the statue where we talked about how I forgot muscle names. This, <laughs> is, this is perfect. <laughs> yeah. I, I also teach history. You, you just got a taste of it. There's more of that in the tutorial, so <laughs> free of charge. <laughs> um, I should also m mention, you have your own YouTube channel, correct? Uh, yes, I do. Yeah. For anyone who does want to follow you and see some more of your stuff, I think I believe that there is there's a link here. Yeah, uh, here in the description for this video. Uh, you can You guys can follow Josh on here. If you like anything that you're seeing here or are curious about some more of the materials that you might see uh, in his course, you should follow over there. Watch some of the videos and see if that teaching style works for you. But to the like 600 of you who are here right now, I think it's working. Josh, it's the first time you've known that 600 people are watching. How do you uh, feel about that? Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you're good. <laughs> feel really good yeah. no that's that's awesome i i kind of wish you hadn't told me that <laughs> I, I did it here at the tail end <laughs> of things so you didn't have to feel it earlier on uh if you guys want to give josh any sort of encouragement to get him through knowing that there are 600 of you watching right now please feel free i'll read some of those for him <laughs> yeah I'm very much a an introvert so I feel this one. Um, so what what is it that you're tackling right now? What is the importance of the areas that you're choosing to to highlight and draw at this stage of the drawing? Um, well, uh, again, I'm probably getting a little distracted as I'm talking at the same time. But uh, um, let's see. Whoa. Oh, no. What happened? I, I, I did it. I drew on. <gasps> you drew on the background? <gasps> Son of a guy. Joshua. Okay, well, that's. Yeah, that's its amateur hour. <laughs> well, ah. they don't, no one else, anyone who doesn't know, they won't realize that as you're working on this right now. <laughs> it's totally okay. It just looks like it's on the background. It's perfect. Nobody saw that happen, right? I'm going to put a poll up here in the chat, and you guys tell me. If you saw him draw in the background or not? Oh, it's it's okay. I honestly I do it so often, and uh, yeah, I, I love myself more every time I do it. <laughs> it's it's the worst when it does happen. But luckily for this one, even if you were working on this piece for your job, this is at a stage where you can still make this work for the purpose that you're doing if you were already like pretty deep into a painting and had flattened down onto the background then that's the absolute worst oh yeah yeah and then your your boss asks you for all the layers <laughs> and you're like oh yeah i got the layers yeah i'll just i'll be right back with those i'll get those to you <laughs> after i paint them all out and redraw them and organize them for you so the chat has your back. I'm going to go ahead and end this poll because they all said no. 75% of them did not see you draw on the background. 
I think that's as good as you never having done it personally. Oh, my sins have been absolved. <laughs> oh, thanks. Thank you all. Yeah. One person did call it unforgivable. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's how I feel about it. I'm <laughs> probably going to go get myself some lashings after. You know, this, you're just trying to get the traditional feel. Just go to my back room and... <laughs> Five, pull, out the, pull out the cat of nine tails five stripes <laughs> usually does the trick so i guess uh returning to the initial thing um you want to work work us through what you're you're doing right now the importance of the areas that you're working on and why you chose those um sure I, i'm focusing more on the the torso here and um yeah i can totally tell him Need to redraw this head. I'm kinda distracted, but um, so my, my focus again. I, I kind of drew the head, and then I uh, found the pit of the neck with the, the sternocleidomastoids, and then just a basic gesture of those clavicles. Um, and to start off with, those could even be more just straight lines, even though on a male they look more like bicycle handles. Um, and then I, I try to find that C curve in the front mm -hmm. uh, that goes from the pit of the neck and follows that center line all the way down to the base of the crotch, which we have censored. So we'll just you know, draw a little block, base the crotch. And then you know, I'll, I'll do um, just a rough kind of egg shape for the block in of the rib cage. And then I'll find uh the gesture of the obliques to show how they sit on top of the pelvis so here we can just kind of draw like a, a little box to show where the pelvis would be and the nice thing is when you find the gesture of the of the obliques you can see um the perspective what the perspective should be on the rest of the pelvis um and again, those sit on top of the, the, the aces, which is the interior part of the, um, the pelvis. And it comes down and into the, the crotch area. Um, and then I blocked in the serratus again here, the riblets. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> Just trying to help everyone. If you said you brought it down to my level, and I appreciate Learn it. Learn the proper terminology. And and you can see here when I gestured in the arm, um, I started off with just a really basic shape. Again, I'm just I'm just finding the overall direction and flow of the arm. So even though like uh, the inside of the arm is is definitely not this curve. I, I like to start off with kind of that flowy curve. It comes down to the wrist, to the hand. And then on the outside, I'll complement that with two soft straights, um, which is kind of nice because it will show the, the blade of the, of the ulna on the outside. And uh, it, it'll give me a guideline for blocking in the deltoids, the triceps, and all that, which we could do right now. So do you, do you normally work th like through through those same kind of groups like you you start with the main mass and then move into things that are kind of stretching out from that or do you ever find yourself starting with something like an arm to just kind of lean into the gesture Um you know again I sometimes vary up my approach um okay. I think usually it's just out of laziness <laughs> Okay um, I mean, that's, that's not bad you found a process that works Yeah but you typically this will be kind of the process where I uh, usually I'm not going to just go in and start drawing the torso like this. I, I'm going to find the gesture first of the limbs. Like here's the arm. Like I'll get that gesture in this gesture, just kind of like a, a quick indication of the hand. And unfortunately, since I drew on my background layer, I can't shrink this. image. <laughs> 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 so... <laughs> That's uh, definitely one of the downsides of doing that. Um, and yeah, I'll, I'll kind of do the same thing with the legs where I'll do like a, just a simple kind of curved line.
to find the the flow of this leg here um, and i'll do the same thing with this leg see how that's more just a curve kind mm -hmm. of find the the overall direction and energy of that and you know i can gesture in the lower leg too the same way and again these are more just kind of guides that i can then break up more and add to um, later in the drawing mm -hmm. I love watching you work through the process. I think that, um, so to mention him again, uh, Proco team member Patrick said that he had uh, gotten some of your courses on Gumroad, the, the things that now be like have been condensed into this course here on Proco. Uh, and he was talking about the quality of those. I think it's, it's really interesting to get to see your process as a person who has like a stylized technical approach. Well, well yeah, it's a, uh... Right now, the approach is a bit all over the place because I'm, again, talking. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, it's usually a bit more uh, methodical. Yeah. I think it, dur during a live stream while fielding questions, uh, having to do all of those different things at the same time, it's it can be pretty complicated. I think there's, there's a reason you end up with those people who stream as their full-time job, basically. They kind of just have like a constant stream of consciousness commentary going because uh -huh. otherwise you have to actively do so many things at the same time and it's it's it's, it's hard it's hard oh yeah yeah it is a it is definitely a skill mm -hmm. yeah it, it's one that like i the entire purpose of me being here is to try to minimize the <laughs> amount of things that you have to do for that one because it's such a known hard thing yeah, I'm very, very grateful you're you're here. Oh, dude, this is this is the best part of my day right now. This Everyone is a freaking would, dream. <laughs> would have to face the the void with with Josh Black. <laughs> um, I mean, I, do you, if you want to talk about the void, K Mac earlier. This is a question from much, much, much earlier. Asked, is the world overwhelming for you? <laughs> is the world? Oh, you don't want to get me started. <laughs> Do you want to talk about the void, Josh? <laughs> um, you, you know, in addition to being a uh, uh, an introvert, I'm also a neurotic. Um, okay. So, so, so naturally, and kind of a hypochondriac and mm -hmm. uh, a worrywart. So, you know, I, I think my um, minor, uh, micro and macro issues, uh, everything worries me. Fair. So I'm just going to be honest. No, I think that's fair. Uh, I, there's there's a couple different ways to approach the idea of being a person who is worried, I think. Um, there's the idea of thinking about it being a thing that makes you um, kind of like can feel like it's like kind of like paralyzing you in a situation when you're about to like make a choice on something or having to consider the implications of anything. But at the same time, it also does kind of prepare you for the next step of something uh and so applying that kind of thing to art is still pretty handy like you're you're a technically minded person so ahead of time you're solving a lot of those things and thinking about the stuff that you will use later i think those might come from the same kind of place yeah uh, i mean being a uh, obsessive compulsive <laughs> is, is definitely part of it mm -hmm. and uh you know unfortunately or fortunately for me uh obsessive compulsive people i think uh usually are pretty good at art um just because they just keep hacking away until they get the results they want they don't they don't give up yeah don't let so, it sit yeah did you ever read the the ender books like ender's game and all of those yes yeah so did those. you did you read the later ones? Um, I, I read uh, Ender's Game and then was it uh, Ender's Shadow? Okay. Okay. Yeah. Ab about Bean. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Fantastic books. Very good books. Uh, there's, there's a later book in there where there's actually, um, there's a whole world where uh, pretty much everyone on that planet has some form of OCD or other, um, like other 
like the way their brain works um like that and it's actually a thing that is used by their like society um to kind of make these people who would drill into problems and problem solve it's it's a whole departure from what the rest of those books are <laughs> but as a person who has adhd uh and the the way that that gives you certain like tactile issues and stuff. I felt very seen as they talked about <laughs> things in there. So that's kind of how they genetically manipulated the genius children to prepare them to uh, command the armies and fight against the, I, I, I wonder if I can see the name of the aliens. Was it Oh, um, no, yeah, yeah. I don't think, I don't, there's, there's not anything bad. The buggers, the formics. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the buggers. Okay. Yeah. yeah I don't no, know. I, Some people may not like that word. I don't know. Mm, I got you. Yeah. Cause there's <laughs> the, the other side of that kind of word for different, different countries. Um, yeah, the other side we, of the pond. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. The, the formics. We'll go with the technical name. Um, yeah. yeah I, I do think it's an extension. I, they use Anton's key, I think, in there. But enough about science fiction books. Uh, I, I, I will say, though, that book um, kind of forecasted a lot of our current technologies and dilemmas. It's kind of it was ahead of its time. I do agree. Yeah. Science fiction, I think, is um, an intensely useful tool that people have used to go to like the logical extension of human behavior. Uh, and so you get some cool stuff out of there that people unintentionally or intentionally, depending on the person, stumbled upon the things that we have now. Dude, right. we... We start. We started the whole thing in here. People are talking about <laughs> Ender's Game and stuff. Uh, talking about Philip K. Dick. Yeah, no, you guys are nailing it. Um, I guess I do want to remind people right now that this isn't a whole thing about science fiction. It is about <laughs> Josh's brand new course uh, that's um, on presale right now until Friday. You can save fifteen, not fifty, fifteen percent off on this course over there. Proco.com slash Josh Black. There's a link here. There's a link in the description. There's a link in the chat. You choose where you want to go. The only place that you need to end up is proco.com slash Josh Black to be able to buy the course. The brushes that you've been seeing used during this demo here, uh, and the demo before that, the demo before that, those are included with the course. They're really good ones. Even Kyle Webster himself asked about those brushes. And if that's not a seal of approval, I don't know what is. Oh, wow. Wow. Well. Now I'm really going to start messing up this. Uh... <laughs> Honestly, I got to flatten this so I can get the rest of the figure in there. So that's why you don't draw in the background. Because then you can't resize it. <laughs> I mean, you could you could try. It'll just be kind of wonky. Mm -hmm. I think I've just been informed by Proco team member John. Uh, that the course is actually 20% off right now. So in case you needed an extra 5% off, let's pretend that's just special for you. It's just for you. Everyone else got 15% off. You get 20. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to have a mob coming your way. And they'll be happy to save extra money. I think it's only a good thing. <laughs> it was Steven, not me. <laughs> Yeah, from the man who brought you riblets, five extra percent off. <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. Um, I don't, I'm I'm curious as as you work on this one, is there anything that you kind of run into as a really common issue that you still struggle with? Besides the drawing on the backgrounds thing, I don't want <laughs> to call it out, but it was a, a hurdle. That oh, came uh, out. yeah, no, um. I mean, there's probably a myriad of things that I mess up on all the time. Um, but uh, definitely, like, typically, I'm not going to just draw one section of the body first. I'm, I'm going to do an overall kind of gesture and lay-in. Um, and I, I want to um, make sure I have the alignment of the feet uh, kind of more or less where it needs to be. So I'll, I'll, I'll draw these lines to kind of connect the feet where they, sh they should be um, kind of connecting with the floor. And that way I know, and I'll do the same thing with the knees, like those kind of connecting. And see, um, with that, uh, I can draw on the rest of the legs with more confidence, knowing that the placement's going to be more or less correct. Um, and I didn't do that at the beginning. 
Uh, so it was a little more um, a la prima, I guess. Mm. It wasn't um, proper gesture first. I mean, I wasn't judging. Oh, you were. <laughs> you so were. <laughs> Listen, I'm no Doug, okay? I'm not as hyper as hypercritical as all that. Get out of my head. <laughs> no, it's, uh, it's, it's mostly my dad who'd be in my mm, head. I, is, my mom always compliments me, and then my dad, he's the one who is just like, oh, yeah. He's like, That's cool. Yeah. Is is your father also an artist? No, no. He, uh, he He's a very good photographer. He has, he has okay. a great eye for photography, but he's... Um, more business minded. He does mm. real estate and um, developing. And uh, uh, is it because of photography? Was that an unintentional photography joke? Oh, <laughs> developing. <laughs> uh, you know, yes, it was. I meant to do that on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> on purpose. I'm very clever. Uh, I don't know if you want to go back into this one too much, but um, Joshua Davila here was asking, how do you avoid your perfectionism getting in the way of knowing when your work is good enough or done? <laughs> that's that's a very good question. And if you um, figure out how, let <laughs> Josh know. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I can't. Uh, hearing that question just brought a flood of memories from when I was starting out. I, I was definitely more of a perfectionist uh, when I took my first figure drawing classes. Uh, I was a student that was staying after class to correct my drawings as much as I could. And, you, you know, I, I needed to let that go mm. and just realize that the, I, I think it is good uh, occasionally to, to see if you can go back in and fix something. But sometimes uh, the more you iterate, the more you do something, the faster you'll learn. Uh, I know that's true for like jujitsu. Um, if, if you like tap out more instead of resist and resist and resist, um, so sometimes when you're, you're resisting too much and you're demanding perfection or you don't want to lose, it prevents you from learning faster. Hmm. And, and that definitely, I think, hindered me maybe a little bit starting out being a perfectionist i i think it's good it, it's like a good bad thing it has its pros and its cons but but sometimes when you uh you're so so much of a perfectionist that you fear failing uh sometimes you fear exploring mm -hmm. and, uh you know taking uh those leaps of faith that would uh lead you to progressing faster and and uh kind of expanding your horizon and all that Mm -hmm. um, I like that. But yeah, I, I I was definitely guilty of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. Yeah, no, I I like the the way that you chose to look at that one, especially I think um, you kind of like you hit on a little bit of a, a separate thing that I think is really important. Uh, there are a lot of different places to learn something that you can apply to different parts of your life. Um, there's a thing that Nintendo does where they don't hire people who their only hobbies, well, at least anecdotally, it was, it's been said that they don't hire people whose only hobbies revolve around video games. They want to hire people who have different, uh, different hobbies, different interests that are more broad, because I think all of those different things expand the person that you are and the way that your brain works in general. Um, so I think bringing in something from Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, BJJ, for those the cool people um i think that's an interesting one we did have one question here from um so like this is a proco team member patrick he asked uh when is your jujitsu course coming out <laughs> to tell us how to break down the body <laughs> yeah i think the next one i'll just um i'll stand back from my computer and i'll be in my gi my jujitsu gi <laughs> and it, it'll be kind of like the, the the Russian chest slash boxing match, but I, I'll be teaching figure drawing and then hopping out of my chair and demonstrating a, a new uh, submission or move for you. I approve. It, it, yeah, if you guys approve, of course. So, I, 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 I would ask them all in the chat if they want that course, but I'm just going to go ahead and say, <laughs> say yes. <laughs> some shit here. <laughs> yeah. I, 
I mean, I, I brought that up because it, it really is true. Like um, when I did jujitsu and, and my dad, he, he kind of got us into it and he got his black belt mm. with the, uh, um, with Pedro Sauer, who trained with the, the Gracies. Oh, nice. Um, and it, so he was the real deal. Um, but yeah, there were so many, so many guys that would come into the gym or the dojo. They have these major egos. And usually they're kind of like the bigger, stronger dudes. They think, okay, I, I'm going to crush this guy. He's like half my size. He's a buck 50. Yeah. Um, and they get smoked. They get, um, and, and they resist tapping out like crazy because they, mm -hmm. they just have these big egos. But then they, because they have big e egos, uh, they get really hurt when they lose and then they don't come back. Yeah. So, it's like finding that balance of letting go enough to where you can allow yourself to fail. Um, so you can learn from your failures and just see those as stepping stones, um, you know, towards your, towards your goal of becoming the artist you want to be or mm -hmm. the fighter you want to be. Yeah. I like that. This is good. I like that one. I should, I should have put you full screen for that. <laughs> to like, in, in like uh intense moment oh all the all the hand gestures the flailing of the arms <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so i guess um let's see here so right now we're at a minute uh, an hour 41 into this so far it's just flown by so i don't know is there anything that you really want to try to like like drive home to people about what's in the course or anything like that i, I don't i don't want to like like just have it be me talking about riblets and things like that a whole bunch. Like I want to kind of give you the floor. <laughs> um, yeah, I, for, for me, a big part of the course is, uh, again, it's, it's really focusing, uh, on a more gestural approach, uh, to the figure and just learning how to work from, uh, simple to more complex, um, shapes, um, you know, as, as a way to create a, a good foundation for, you know, whatever it is that you're uh, going to end up drawing. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that it really is kind of the, the main focus is just illustrating the importance of, of gesture. Um, and then also just giving you a nice overall uh, kind of overview of the, the main muscle groups, the, the skeleton, and how to gesturally uh, portray those and um, uh, just kind of understand the the rhythms of those forms. So that's uh, that's definitely the main focus mm -hmm. of the tutorials. Mm -hmm. um, for anyone who's maybe not necessarily quite there where you're able to buy a course right now, or if you're in a country where some of the courses might seem a little bit expensive. One thing that I would recommend um, is that you can make a free account on Proco. It's proco.com slash community. You guys can work along with some of the free lessons that we'll post. Um, other, other materials that you can download will be included in there. Um, but if you have that free account, you can participate in, with by sharing some of the things that you've made, whether that's something that you're just studying and you want to share, ask for a critique on, or if it's following along with one of those free assignments that I mentioned. You guys can post that work, get critique from some of the critiquers in the community, other students, or some of the instructors. You'll probably hear from that Proco team member, Patrick, that I mentioned, just a championship level critiquer going through doing the Lord's work, helping people out. Um, and you can actually follow Josh on there. Program slash Josh Black. Uh, that'll take you to his course. Uh, and then you guys can also find him on there. If you follow him, you'll see if he posts any new lessons or if suddenly out of nowhere, he makes a brand new Photoshop brush that he decides to share for free. I don't know. We'll see. If you want it, you got to tell him on socials. But yeah, that's yeah. a free account. Go ahead. Oh, I was just saying, yeah, please do. Yeah, let him know you want free stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I'm always asking uh, for free stuff too, so. I mean, there's no reason not to. The worst you can get is a no, right? Exactly. They're not going to charge you extra for a different thing. It never hurts to ask. Yeah. Um, Dory Does Voices says, I miss the Draftsman podcast. The Draftsman podcast 
it's st- we stopped recording episodes as full seasons of them, but you can still get episodes at random. Um, basically, what Stan and Marshall decided was that they didn't want to record a full season of something, trying to like do this intense research process for everything beforehand to try to like get all these ideas together to do a full season. They're still going to record episodes here and there. It's just when they find something that they really want to talk about in a, any given moment. So recently, well, not that recently now, there was an episode where Stan's teacher, Jeff Watts from the Watts Atelier, he came by the studio. And so they recorded a whole podcast with Jeff. So it's not gone. It's still there. Uh, I know there's so many questions still remaining, but I think you, you ended up tackling a lot of these as kind of side bits of other questions. People were asking some more specific stuff, um, specific things like a uh, redhead asked, um, how the F do you draw hands? Uh, <laughs> I think you kind of like, without talking about it being specific to hands, uh, I think you did a good job of talking about working big to small. Um, but is there anything that you do with hands that you think people can do as like a unintentional pun here, a shorthand for drawing hands? Um, yeah, for, for sure. Um, here, I'll come back to this, this eye. Uh, just getting that little cash shadow in. Um, gonna move that over. Uh, so, you know, one thing that, that helps is when you just break the hand up into very simple digestible forms. There you go. There you go. Sorry, my my wife is. I, I'm I'm I think I'm about there. This is perfect. <laughs> yeah, my my wife just. It's it's that cracked, time. Cracked open the door and tapped on her her wrist. Yeah. I don't I don't know what that means, but. <laughs> there was no watch. Um, no, I think uh, you mentioned sometimes like uh, life can intervene in you getting to like fully study something. It's good to be cognizant of those other things. Oh, yeah, there's always something coming up. Yeah. Um, I, you know, a, a great exercise. I, I could show you like the the basic breakdown of, of the hand, but might need a little more time for that. Yeah, um, I understand that one. But uh, I think a really good exercise that one of my teachers taught me is uh, you can even study your own hand and try like nailing down the outline in your sketchbook and keep like uh, turning your hand at different angles. Um, and just get used to drawing the hand. So that'll, again, it's the pencil mileage and it'll also help you kind of get rid of that fear. So much of the hand is getting the directions mm -hmm. uh, co correct of the fingers. Um, like gesturing in the, the palm of the hand and the thumb, that's kind of easier. Um, and, and that's, you know, you can just uh, do like a gestural line for the knuckles. Um, oh, let's see if we have a hand. Wait, no, Josh, uh-uh. No, you cannot nope. dive in and do a hand right now. Oh, you're, well, get so you're lucky because there's no... Oh, wait, no, there is there is a hand there. Oh, it's a hand. All it's right, the, guys. The only hand. Let, let everybody watch Josh make this very specific decision that he's making right now. <laughs> yes, this, is, this will just be very quick. Uh, but again, you know, you start off with very simple... Um, getting the basic direction in. And then um, I like to focus on uh, the knuckle line, like nailing that gesture down. And then uh, just kind of getting the gesture of the index finger. And then I'll kind of clump the other fingers here together. And then I can find uh, the gesture line of the secondary knuckles. Oh my gosh. My, uh, my stylus is misbehaving. Oh no. The, the nib just, it keeps turtling in its shell. It's. Oh no. Yeah. I think it's clear. Josh's wife has the ability to 
to hex it. <laughs> and she's retracting. <laughs> and she's retracting the nib. <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, it's like again, it's just starting from very simple, and then you can start breaking it down. Um, um, but uh, I would say maybe just focus on um, doing a quick gesture of the wrist and then doing a quick block in of the palm mm -hmm. and then gesture in the knuckle line. Like here, let me show you on the, the model. And, and maybe just do this as a way to start out uh, with the hand just to kind of get used to it. Um, so this here, well, that's not showing up very well. Oh, I see the green. Oh my gosh, it's the resolution is so small that the yeah the line is not. Anyway, so that that's the knuckle line right there. Um, and usually that's kind of what I try to find. I try to block out um, the mass of the hand, and then I'll block out the the gesture line of the knuckles, and then the secondary knuckles, and then. I'll, I'll usually try to find the gesture of like the index first. And then um, I'll try to clump the fingers together as much as I can, just to make it like a simple uh, shape, you know, like here, if I were to just do something like super quick. Do you use... Um normal like plastic tips and nibs for your your stylus or do you use a felt nib um i had a nice felt nib before and then um it kind of died on me and mm. so i actually need to go buy some more nibs <laughs> okay. but now i'm using the the hard plastic nib right now and kind of getting used to that mm -hmm. um so you were talking about uh, doing a quick indication of the hand yeah, so I, I think um, if you could just get like that basic uh, shape of the palm and then d do a quick gesture of the fingers and the gestural uh, gesture line of the knuckles, you know, that's a pretty good simplification. Mm -hmm. um, and just kind of practice that. And if we were to go in, you got the two knuckles of the thumb. And then here you got the kind of the, the knuckles of the uh see these would be the carpels and yeah. you, do, you do cover the hands in the course you said right is it something that you break down in this kind of way or is it more talking about kind of the landmarks of the hand that you um it, it's it's more just like really basic kind of gestural approach to the hand i don't I go as much in depth on the hand mm -hmm. um but yeah, that, that is actually something I would like to do a, a future tutorial on. Just okay. I mean, I have on the... I have great news on that one. I ran a poll here, uh, and I asked if people if they'd be interested uh, in seeing you on Proco more. And 98% of people said yes. Oh, man. Thanks, 98%. If I asked any other question, I could ask, like, which one's better, the left or right Twix? Or anything like that, <laughs> it would it would be terrible. No, no what unanimous uh, agreement doesn't happen like this. So, oh wow. Yeah. Well, I, I wonder who the two percent are. Well, it only it only says no for one percent. <laughs> so I, I I'm don't just know. kidding. It's fine. There's this silent one percent in here somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Everyone. Uh... It was like I, I wanted. I wonder who they are. I'm going to their houses. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I would not uh, be offended if someone had a negative opinion of me. It's now. Nah, sure, I would. I'm be, sure there's a lot more than than one percent of nope. this this planet. <laughs> I, I won't hear it. I won't hear it. You're a magnificent, wonderful person. Oh, uh, I, I do want to remind people that again, the whole reason that we've been here, and if you've made it here to the end of this video. You should probably consider getting Josh's course. Progo.com slash Josh Black. There's a brand new course. Uh, I believe the name of that course is the Anatomy Survival Guide. Uh, right now, it is 20% off during this free sale that lasts until Friday. Uh, you guys should get it. It's really good. If you go, But if you guys can't 
go get that course because of money or anything else. You just really don't want to because you were in that 1%. Um, you can go tell Josh how much you didn't like him while he was on here after you subscribe to his YouTube channel that's linked in the description here. Uh, and for the rest of you guys who couldn't buy a course because of money things, there's a bunch of free stuff to be had with the free account at proco.com slash community. You can get critiques. You can just share the work that you've been working on, uh, even if you don't want to critique or help other people out with some critiques. Um, Josh, this is wonderful. I think we should do this again sometime. What do you think? Oh, for sure. No, it's been fun. We got to talk more about Ender's Game. Yeah, listen, I will absolutely talk to you about any science fiction you want to talk about. <laughs> Just turn it into a, a, a talk show or podcast. It's I'm, I would be more than happy. Well, I um, draw just... circles and ellipses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, just to answer one last question here in the chat to this person here, Simon Richter asking, is this course different from the ones on Josh's Gumroad? This is a, a condensation of some of your Gumroad courses right yes yes this um so for those who are familiar with my gum courses i have the anatomy bundle on there but that doesn't include everything that's included in this uh uh proco bundle which uh includes uh the in-depth tutorial on the legs and also the in-depth tutorial on the arms and also includes tutorial on shading lighting uh go going over the anatomy of lighting um uh, but you'll also get all the brushes as well that are included in the Gumroad uh, tutorials. Mm -hmm. So uh, you're, you're definitely getting a, a, a pretty good deal. Um, Value-wise, you get a better deal buying the Proco bundle than if if you wanted to buy everything on the Gumroad. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate it, especially right now because it's on pre-sale, twenty percent off. Even better, uh, Josh. Will you join me in? Telling everyone to have a good rest of the day before I play the course trailer again. Oh, for sure. Uh, thanks so much, everyone, for sticking around and, and joining us today. It's been a been a pleasure, and thanks for all the questions. Yeah. All right, now to a trailer. Hey, welcome to my survival guide on anatomy. I'm Josh Black, a senior concept artist and figure drawing instructor with over 15 years of experience in the gaming industry. Having taught figure drawing and anatomy at BYU University and online for over a decade now, I've been honing my skills, and now I'm here to share them with you. This course is the culmination of everything I've learned about anatomy, simplified into a survival kit tailored for artists. Whether you're just starting out or looking to refine your skills, this course will help you navigate through the complexities of drawing human anatomy. We'll start off with the basics, breaking the human body down into manageable sections, the head, torso, arms, and legs. And yes, we'll cover both male and female forms in these videos. I've put together lessons to help emphasize the importance of the bones and muscles underneath the skin. On top of the anatomy lessons, you'll also get some instruction on gesture drawing, which I consider to be the cornerstone of this course. Gesture is all about capturing the essence of human movement, something that can truly bring your art to life. So join me in my anatomy survival guide. 